Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and 1st edition Charizard. Pack one, pick one. Our rares decent, Malevolent Hermit. To drop early, get a bit of value late. The ability can certainly come in handy. There's also good uncommon in Infernal Grasp, which is, you know, at least close in power level with Hermit. Also a fan of Rebirth, can do some fun things with it if you get a lot of the uh, eccentric farmers, for instance. And then any commons that jump out, hobbling zombies are right, and a couple pump spells for the humans deck. Yeah, I think it's one of the top three here, probably go with Hermit. And ideally, maybe draft like a blue-white Disturb deck. There's no amazing Disturb cards we're passing in the pack, so... Let's see where we end up. Second pack has a couple of options. The rares missing. Some of the best common removal spells with Eaten Alive and Slash. There's an OK white card with Captain. And I guess the Griff as well. There's Screelix for blue-red spells, so... A lot of different directions we can go in. None of the blue cards here, the mono-blue ones, are particularly impressive. So Eaten Alive for blue-black. Between Slash and Screelix, could take Slash hope to wheel Screelix for blue-red. Although my experiences with blue-red have been kind of lackluster. I think it's the Eaten Alive over the white cards and the red cards, but it's close. Well, rewarded with a scab. And there's another Eaten Alive and Abomination, so very stacked pack. Just a stacked pack in general. There's Slash, some of the premium white commons with Witch and Silversmith. There's Liberator. So... This must have been an amazing pack, with the rare and uncommon missing as well. I think it's still Scab here. And then hope to wheel one of these, which is a real possibility given how stacked this pack is in general. Okay. This pack's a bit weaker. Still a few good options with Consider. There's Mysterious Tome. A little bit on the slow side, but will eventually generate a lot of value. Crawl from the cellar we should be able to get later. Could be fine as a one-off in blue-black specifically. It's at its best. And there's also the uh, silver bolts. So, a couple options. Um, my experience with Tome has been medium, I would say. Definitely had games where it shined and games where it didn't do anything. So, I'll try it. And pack five, still seeing a lot of good white cards. Blue and black has dried up. So I might want to speculate on either Veteran or Candlegrove Witch. What's it going to be? I mean, Bladebrand could be okay if we get enough Decayed tokens, although I don't have any yet. Veteran sets up maybe the blue-white Disturb deck that I was talking about. Which might not be at its best here. And... What do we have here? A couple okay white cards. And the Stardle in blue, which is also fine. So, I guess Stardle goes in both blue-black and blue-white. Although probably better in blue-black. If I take a Griff doesn't really go with uh, our primary plan. Yeah, sure. And then there's a pretty late Flesh Taker as well. Don't think I'm likely to end up black-white. Although there's no exciting blue or black card here either. Could take a Blood Pact, I suppose, but not a card I actively want to play. Sure, I guess I'll 
Take a flesh taker just in case. Blade brand seems fine. So getting mixed signals, but those very stacked early packs also make sending signals a little tricky. Because someone might get like a fourth pick Moonrager slash, think red is wide open, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, Behemoth probably here. Plays well with our Decay tokens. Amalgam could be fine. Pretty late Bird Admirer. Sifters can have its moments in blue-white specifically, but generally not a card I want in blue-black. Alrighty, so first pack started out great, but kind of got a bit worse near the end. Scab Wrangler, on the other hand, is a great card to open. We'll need some Decay tokens to go with it. We didn't wheel the Abomination. Um, also didn't wheel Crawl from the Cellar. So we're definitely not the only ones in this type of archetype. That being said, like, it's not like I'm going to take a can stay away and pivot into black-white at this point. Yeah, I think I don't have enough uh, playables for that, so take a Wrangler and then should be able to wheel something out of that pack. So it seems like we're on blue-black. Easy Organ Hoarder. But there's some other good cards for black white, both a trainer and another flesh taker. Also great, some good green cards with a farmer, the rise of the ants as well. But hoarder. Probably the best common in the set overall. So we've got an okay start here, I'd say. Nothing busted. Only the one actual spot removal spell. Do like the angler quite a bit early play with a bit of graveyard value later. Don't think I'm splashing counterpart, although it is cute with cards like Organ Hoarder. Um, we drafted a counterpart deck last week, so you can always go back and check that out if you missed it. Um, I don't think I'm playing Secrets or Spirits, so I'll just take the 20 gems. Uh, sure, 20 gems it is. Gale Drifter would be playable, but I might wheel one out of the first pack we opened. Alright, what do we have here? Geist Wave, maybe. Not exciting, but gives us a bit of interaction. Or I could take a Rebirth on the Splash, although I don't have any Evolving Wilds or Lanterns yet to do so. So it's going to be kind of tricky. Probably just a Geist Wave. Another Amalgam seems fine. So the five drops are taken care of. Yeah, the remaining cards aren't particularly exciting. See some pump spells in green and white, and that's about it. Alright, so this was our original pack, did not wield the Gale Drifter, so someone else is picking those up. Um, yeah, nothing I really want here, to be honest. Maybe I'll need the uh, Observer, but it's not a card I actively want. It's a pretty late Farmer, too. Alright, Evolving Wilds, or 20 Gems. Hmm. Nothing I currently want to splash. Would still be good fixing in a two-color deck, of course. But I've got a feeling this draft isn't going great, so I'll take the gems. Picked up a lot of green cards late. Maybe I end up playing the counterpart anyway. Any chance I pivot into blue-green here? 
I mean, almost. It's not like my black is all that exciting. Took the scab and uh, eaten alive early, but then haven't seen a ton of black since. So how does a uh, blue-green deck look like here? Maybe even the growth. Yeah, this might actually be better, in which case... Probably still Abomination over Path. Otherwise it would have been the Fenestrates. I mean, I, I gotta do it now. Alright, blue-green it is. Second Defenestrate could have been fine, but... Yeah, so what I need now is more creatures with good ETB effects to copy with Counterpart. I have a lot of two drops, although the Sifters, for instance, is not a card I actively want. Yeah, so kind of sad we missed out on the Rise of the Ants. Although I don't recall passing too many amazing blue green cards. Well, there's my Rise of the Ants if I want it. So in the, the last pack, we did finally get some good black. Could have had double Defenestrate eaten alive. But I think I uh, still stick to my blue-green plan here. And consider could be fine. There's a sentry. Sentry's not particularly synergistic here. Don't think I'm splashing old stick fingers. Silver bolt also an option. Since I'm light on removal. Hmm, this one's close. Should maybe go with a bolt. I do like the bird admirer quite a bit. Another rice and a scab in the same pack. There's also the Wolf as a decent 2 for a more defensive deck. But we'll rise. A little bit light on ramp cards, although 7th pick Rejuvenator seems fine. Abomination would have been nice for the blue-black deck, but blue-green. Outside of like the Scab Wrangler, we don't have a ton of reasons to want a lot of the zombie tokens. So I think I'd rather ramp into double Rise of the Ants. Nothing here. Not gonna play tapping. Path could be fine for ramp. I'll give up the 20 gems value there. Alright, duel might make the cut. Probably not playing Sprout. So yeah, I think our blue-black deck would have been you know, a little bit better after pack 3 than pack 2, of course, but still would have been kind of medium. Uh, I think this blue-green deck, while not perfect, is at least going to be more fun. So I can maybe cut one Amalgam. I think I'm fine with the rest. The Observer still works with Rise of the Ants, at least. Timberland Guide has a little synergy with Counterpart. Anything I've left out here. So I would need to make one cut if we play 17 land. So what are my weaker cards? Geist Wave. Startle's not particularly synergistic anymore. Still like the uh, Observer decent amount with Double Rise and Croaking Counterpart to Flashback as well. Yeah, one of these two. I think I'll keep the Geist Wave. Yeah, the 
the Sprout's just a card that requires a lot in deck building, I feel. If we had three or four eccentric farmers and other ways to mill myself, then I would maybe consider it, but yeah, our creature counts, 13. It's not super low, but also not high enough, I feel, for Sprout to be great. Has a little synergy with the flashback on counterpart and the rise of the ants. But this is going to be at its best in black-green, where you care more about milling yourself, generally speaking. And then probably going to play a few extra forests to make the unnatural growth castable, which does hurt my early game since we have a lot of blue two drops. But I only need single blue. So 710 with double rejuvenator feels okay. All right, let's try this. Ah, uh, yes, our, uh, our 10 forest deck. It's actually still probably a keep with Abomination into Hoarder. But uh, if we draw a natural growth, it's not going to look great. We drew over half of our islands already. Yeah, a natural growth could fall in the win more category. It is very good with cards like Rise of the Ants, which are good at stabilizing you and playing defense, but not necessarily you know, getting across the finish line if the opponent has like a random 4-4. It's not like blue-green typically plays a lot of pump spells. So that's a situation where a natural growth can kind of push you over the top. Alright, gonna need the forest here. Even though Wrangler would have been pretty nice too. But yeah, outside of like a blue-green ramp deck, I wouldn't consider a natural growth. Sure. Nice little combo. Good thing we milled a natural growth. So, seems fine. And then we've got Tome for card draw if the game stalls out a bit. Alright, trainer with coven enabled. So, probably want to keep up Geist Wave as, if possible. So you can go Hermit, play Timberland Guide on probably the bird, and then keep up both Hermit and Geist Wave. I guess I could have tapped to keep green up. Could also like chum block with my Timberland guide, bounce it with Geist Wave to draw a card, and get the ETB value again next turn. Could see myself making that play as well. So Amalgam holding the fort while Abomination attacks in the air. Although we're down to 11 from that Siege Zombie. Necrosynthesis. That's ambitious. So I probably want to bounce it before they get the Coven trigger. I 
Ooh, croaking counterpart. That's gonna be pretty good here, right? Six mana. Second counterpart, angler, keep up hermits. And then what do I copy? Abomination, most likely. Could also copy the opponent's stuff. Um, hmm. Copying the Avenger is kind of interesting. Although the fact that the creature is tapped and attacking means, like, I would be suiciding my Wrangler if I try and get it back. Could also go for Seed Zombie. I think Seed Zombie is going to be better on the flashback half, and I would rather get the Abomination now. I guess I can attack first. Although Hermit would protect anyway. So yeah, copying Siege Zombie could do a lot of damage next turn. Gonna have five in the air. Why not wait to copy the trainer? Can still flash back and do that next turn. So no attacks. Yeah, I guess Comping Trainer here seems fine. Can hit for 6 with Abomination, plus 2 more. Keep up Hermit still. Close call with the Seed Zombie, which would also be quite strong. Can also use the trainer with the amalgam, make that unblockable next turn. So, they probably have to kill me now. And it's gonna happen through Malevolent Hermits. Opponent back up to five. And... Most likely dead here. All right, sweet. All right, on the play, hand is incredibly slow. Does being on the play make up for it is a question. Turn three tome, turn four draw. Ideally hit a couple lands and a rejuvenator. Yeah, I don't love it, but mulliganing is probably not the solution either. Farmer was a great draw. Should probably prioritize playing forests in case of a natural growth. All right, <laughs> there goes our natural growth once again. Fine, I didn't need you anyway. Uh, 
so next turn I can draw plus maybe guide. If I draw land, I'll just play a five. So I've got a lot of heavy hitters in hand. Hopefully we can survive until then. All right, taking three already here. So this is gonna hurt. Probably cavalry over amalgam. So removal is going to be painful. Hopefully the ants can save us. No land, sadly. So, what's to play? I'm guessing it's just Amalgam. Easier to play the two drops later. Still mill myself because we have flashback stuff. Yeah, the single threat's worse in the face of another removal spell over the two two drops. But, I mean, if they have it, they have it. Did not want to see a big flyer. So what's her answer to the collector? Yeah, racing it is going to be tough, especially now. So this is kind of the exact situation where a natural growth would be useful to kind of break the board stall. Do have the reach creature I could draw. For now, I imagine it's still play Rise of the Ants, although I'm gonna take one more from Siege Zombie end of turn, so it's a pretty fast clock. I need to answer both the zombie and the collector long term. So maybe I just gotta draw. Yeah, the tome can tap every other turn. It's not really ideal. Should maybe put the counter on Amalgam in case I start racing with it. Counter on Drifter doesn't really make a, a big difference. So next turn I can Ants plus tap down a Collector. Still gonna be close to dead, so I might have to jump here. Yeah, sadly it works out a little awkwardly where this would have been a better turn to have the other side of Chronicle in terms of mana efficiency. So I'm taking two down to seven. Yeah, I mean, if I kill the Siege Zombie and draw a Reach Creature, or... Not sure what else.
counterpart. What do you do for me? Can copy Siege Zombie, copy Bloodline Collector. Guess I could make them discard their last card if I deal damage to them. And then I get a Chum Blocker for the Flyer. So that's probably my best bet. So do I send in an unblockable Amalgam? And lose my good blocker. So let's see, three, six, seven, eight. Should maybe start by using the tomb. Could also counterpart copy the siege zombie. And then flashback counterpart. And then the siege zombie can enable the collector. But I don't think copying siege zombie is going to save me from their siege zombie. I do have that one fight spell I could draw. <laughs> nice. All right, well. Not sure if this is correct, but I'll give it a shot. Right, just to land. So it's mostly sea zombie that's problematic now, as we can chump collector. All right. Let's see if organ hoarder can help. Not quite. Maybe I should still cast Path just to get more mana and get this Cry if I'm not going to copy anything with Counterpart this turn. Although I could copy the Hoarder too now, which is kind of sweet, so I'll just grab the land. Then I could still find the Fight spell, which is probably the card I'm looking for here. All right, there we go. So we might be doing it. Still no attacks, I don't think. And then duel with Coven, probably on the Amalgam still. And kill that thing. This is still main phase one, so if her opponent tapped all their stuff to deal damage, they would be taking a lot of damage as well, so they actually didn't go for it. Alright, um, probably no attacks. And then, gotta remember to tap Collector. So we're sort of doing it. Hermit's good insurance to have. I think I should start attacking with the Amalgam if I can. So that's three mana gone. Copy the Collector with the Counterpart. Make him discard again and have a Chumper. And then I can still use Tome. Another land, that's fine. Could also play Hermits. I think I'd rather use Tome. I guess I might as well do it now. Alright, more life gain coming up. Yeah, points at 11, so things are looking up. Don't necessarily have to jump, but it feels safer to do so. Geist Wave is good too. So flashback, arise, tap the flyer, although then I can't amalgam. Yeah, amalgam has to attack here pretty much. So I guess I'll start there. Then 
and I could play Rejuvenator, Hermit, and Chronicle. Interloper, sure. So do I have lethal here? If I make Amalgam unblockable, they have four, five, six, six blockers to my many attackers. Alright, I think we did it. Can even bounce a token here just because. That was a close one. Copying Organ Hoarder with Counterpart was a pretty sweet play. Okay, this sounds a lot less exciting, but I think it's still a keep. Two Silver Bolts, or not two Silver Bolt on turn one. So I'm gonna go Bolt, Observer, probably Path on three. Then turn four I could go Tome Activate. And then turn five, probably rise. I don't know, this is close call. So mono black so far. Alright. We've seen a lot of this card today. Good to get that uh, green mana for a natural growth. Alright, they found a red, so we might be in trouble here. Right. That's not so bad. So I could shoot something with Bolt, or I can Tome Draw, next turn Rise. I think long term I'm probably going to kill the Interloper anyway, so might as well do it now. Try and stabilize our life total first and then worry about drawing cards. I mean, to be honest, if they hadn't killed my Observer, I would have been able to rise a turn early. But, yeah, still probably a little aggressive there. Love me some ants. Alright, Florian, so that's the reason they're going Vampires. Sadly, don't have my bolt anymore, so I wouldn't have a lot of ways to answer it, but you can always try and just block. So, seven mana. If I play Rejuvenator next turn, I can flashback Rise. So, probably Hermit Rejuvenator, keep up Hermit. That Rejuvenator blocks Florian, or we could try and double block with Hermit to counter a combo trick, although they could still pay the three. What if I what if I blocked with everyone? What's the worst that can happen? They have 
plus three power. They would put the ants first, and then I just don't counter it with the hermits. Florian still dies because it's only one extra toughness. Bladebrand would be bad, I agree. Um, so that's kind of the worst case scenario here, I guess. But, I mean, I can't let Florian hit me. So what would be the solution then? Just block with Rejuvenator. And then they might still Blade Brand, and I guess that happens. Although if it's a different pump spell, I think I would rather quadruple block. Yeah. I'll block with everyone. Problem is if I block with everyone but Hermits, they can pay the counter spell ability from Hermits on their stolen vitality or what have you. And then after killing the two ants, I wouldn't have enough power to kill Florian. Yeah, so now I think I just let that happen. Six, so these two die. And then I'm fine. All right, so that works. Just gonna chill. Nice combo with the Awakener here. They get a free attack in. Hmm. I would not attack with the Awakener if I were them. Sure, take the three. I mean, I could block. If I block, then they don't get to sacrifice to Awakener. So it'll probably sack and I just don't take any damage. All right. Sure. Now I have Rejuvenator to block any future vampires. So, seven mana. Is it time to start drawing with Tomb? Or do I Hoarder first? If Hoarder finds a land, I could play Tome and activate in the opponent's turn. But I probably don't want to find a land with Hoarder. So maybe it's just Farmer, Tome, draw with Tome. And I'll draw in their turn, I, I suppose. And then we'll eventually find more ants. Yeah, vampires kind of struggles if they don't have some evasive creature at this stage of the game. Stinger's not bad. Ooh, croaking counterpart with organ hoarder. Don't mind if I do. Well, that was an easy choice. And I think I want to cast Rise twice. And probably pass end of turn, tap the 4-4 four four so I can start swinging. Sure. So is decking a concern? Eh, only a little bit. I'll let them attack if they want. Alright, pretty aggressive attack, all things considered. So, they can pump twice, up to five. What if I put Rejuvenator Farmer in front of Stinger? Then they can pump once to kill Farmer or twice to kill Rejuvenator, that feels better. 
and then and here probably take four because I don't want to lose my hoarder because then I can no longer copy with counterpart. Yeah, sure, seems fine. I guess the downside of losing Rejuvenator is that it opens up Hungary for more to attack. So maybe I just double block with ants instead. Keep the Rejuvenator around. They pump once, kill the ants. That's fine. And then probably still gonna use Chronicle here just so I can draw more. Let's make some ants. And we can draw end of turn. So, time to 4-4 four, four smash. And then flashback Rise of the Ants once again. Sure. I guess I could go digging for a natural growth next turn if they don't concede. Can flashback counterparts. I guess never mind, they trade it for organ hoarder. So it's not gonna not gonna happen. No, you you cannot copy frogs with counterpart. But, you know, could just top deck a natural growth that works. Yeah, I would uh, agree that this blue-green deck has been more fun so far than blue-black would have been. All right, need a third land, ideally a fourth land as well, but yeah, I'll try. All right, so far so good. Probably can afford to get second blue. Could even copy the hobbling zombie here, but probably fine to ramp. Probably Rejuvenator, as it lines up a little bit better than Organ Hoarder on this board. And I definitely want a counterpart to Hoarder here, so don't want it to get removed. That's fine, so we still block the Captain. And it's time to make some Ants. Would be painful if they can exile my two flashback cards here. Could have played around that a bit better. But uh, next turn I can flashback the Ants. My oh my. So they played that pre-combat to have Coven, so they might have plus two plus one to the team. So let's assume they do. How do I block? Can double block silversmith which kind of forces them to use it and I still only lose one ant yeah so 
so pretty happy with that exchange. Yeah, zombies are pretty good against green decks typically, but the ants are a plenty, and uh, they can get past those zombies eventually. I guess I can make a couple attacks now. Now that we secured more ants. And counterpart on hoarder means I could easily find a natural growth eventually. Do they have another one of those pump spells? Could just jump with a 1-1. One -one. I want to take unnecessary damage and then die to a flyer. Sure. Seems fine. That worked. Maybe a reanimation spell? Who knows. Alright, Behemoth is pretty chonky, although Silver Bolt can finish it off. I think we can get aggressive. Don't think I want to trade off my darling Organ Hoarder here just yet, but... Okay. So much value. Haha, <laughs> uh -huh. they should have exiled my organ hoarder. <laughs> Such aggressive attacks. Do we want to go wide first and then slam it? Because right now they have two chumpers, so it wouldn't be lethal. Yeah, we can wait a turn. So send in these two. All right, next turn is going to be glorious. Yeah, you're right. I should have played around my opponent conceding. Oh well. 7-0, I believe. Yeah, this one was fun. After pivoting in... What was it? Kind of the end of pack 2. I switched from blue-black to blue-green. So, yeah. Being flexible in drafts important. Apparently rare drafting is too. Let's crack some packs. Ah yes, lovely gems. If we're doing a pack one, pick one here. It's been a while since I've seen Aldrich's Outrider in play. Like the first week it was everywhere, but haven't really seen it since. Still a good card. Yeah, Blessing would have been okay in our deck. Didn't even have a Shadow Beast sighting. The ants were just everything we needed. Eccentric Farmer, of course, has been great for us. 
What's it gonna be? Wild card or mythic? Wild card, I'll take it. You get 20 gems once you get the uh, all the rares from a set completed, basically. Alrighty. That's gonna be it for me today. I wanna thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.